Hello and welcome back to Open Discussions for Women. My name is Annie. I am your host and I am elated to come back tonight with another blessed session from the book of Revelations. You all, if you haven't already, this channel is designed so that you can log on and be fed the word of God. So I would encourage you go ahead and get your notebook, your pen, your Bible and your uh, coffee, your tea, your water, get ready to really and truly feast in the word of God. Tonight we're in chapter four. And listen, if this is your first time chiming into the channel, I'd like to say welcome, welcome. You are welcome here. If you are a faithful subscriber or just that person who's been tuning in and enjoying these sessions, I'd like to say welcome back. Well, without further ado, we're going to dive into the word of God. But before we do, we always say a word of prayer. So let us prepare our hearts for a word of prayer. Lord God, tonight we come to you thanking you for all things, thanking you for allowing us to see another day in you. Father, tonight we ask that you will forgive us of all sin, known and unknown. Prepare our hearts even now, Father, as we go into your word. Minister to every listener, Lord God. Prepare their heart, penetrate their hearts tonight with your word. And Lord, captivate us tonight in your word. Father, allow us to receive a fresh revelation from you in the name of Jesus. Father, we will be so careful to give you the glory, honor, and praise. I surrender my lips to your control. Holy Spirit, have your way. So great. So open up your word. If you have your Bible, I'll ask if you will go ahead and turn to Revelation. Revelation is the last book in the New Testament. I'll ask you to turn to Revelation, the fourth chapter, and we are starting at verse six tonight. And it reads as follows. And before the throne, there was a sea of glass like unto crystal and in the midst of the throne and round about the throne were four beasts full of eyes before and behind. And the first beast was like a lion, and the second beast like a calf, and the third beast had a face as a man, and the fourth beast was like a flying eagle. And the fourth beast had each of them six wings about him, and they were full of eyes within. And they rest not day and night, saying, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty which was and is and is to come. And when those beasts give glory and honor and thanks to him that sat on the throne who liveth forever and ever, the four and twenty elders fall down before him that sat on the throne and worship him that liveth forever and ever and cast their crowns before the throne saying thou art worthy O Lord to receive glory and honor and power for thou hast created all things and for thy pleasure they are and were created you all this is verse 11 this concludes chapter 4 Let's get into this discussion. You all, we are keeping with the title, The Heavenly Encounter, because John has been captivated in the heavenly realm and he is having a precious opportunity to experience and to have a heavenly encounter. He is having an experience like no other. John has been captivated in the heavenly realm to encounter God. He is he is describing this encounter and in his description we talked about in our last session significant keys of this description that signifies John is in the throne room of where God sits on the throne. Now John has described to us in uh 
in verses uh, verses four, he described that he saw 24 elders. Now, John goes on to describe tonight for us that before the throne was a sea of glass like unto crystal. And in the midst of the throne and round about the throne were four beasts. Full of eyes before and behind. Now, if you've been following the channel, if you've been tuning in and, and receiving the word from the channel, you'll know that we have spoke of such a scenario where an angel, an angelic being, and that angelic being name is the it's the cherubim, and and that's the angelic being that is um the being with the four faces the the creatures the four creatures uh faces but in this specific text john describes four beasts and this is not to be confused with the angelic being this is different Similar to the experience and the encounter Ezekiel had, the vision Ezekiel had of his heavenly encounter. So you guys, let's let's talk for a moment. I'm sorry, I'm so excited. Let me just kind of calm down. We have to talk this thing through. So first we're going to talk about the beast. Okay, so John, he describes... Four beasts full of eyes before and behind. John says the first beast was like a lion. He says the second beast was like a calf. The third beast had a face of a man. And the fourth beast was like a flying eagle. And what did he say? And the four beasts had each of them six wings about him and they were full of eyes within and they rest not day and night now the, the this this description of the beast he say they they never rest basically he's saying that they are in continual worship to the lord hallelujah now, John is in this heavenly realm and he is experiencing this heavenly encounter. And in this experience, he is seeing how in the heavenlies, there will be continual worship to God. And these beings, they continue to worship him saying What's the song we sing? Holy, holy, holy Lord God Almighty, which is, which was, and is, and is to come. This is just a blessing, you guys, to encounter such an experience. Then he goes on to say in verse 9, when those beasts give glory and honor and thanks to him that sat on the throne who liveth forever and ever, we know there is, there is one who liveth forever and ever, and that is God. The, the 24 elders fall down before him that sat on the throne and worship him that liveth forever and ever and cast their crowns before the throne. Imagine the beasts are, are, are basically constantly saying without pause, holy, holy, holy Lord God almighty, which was and is and is to come. And Every time they worship and give God praise in this manner, the 24 elders continue to bow and worship the Lord. They continue to bow down and they continue to uh, release their crowns before the throne saying, 
Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power, for thou hast created all things, and for thy pleasure they are and were created. Let's talk about this for a moment. What what are the elders doing? The elders are joining the beast in worship to God and saying to God that all things. You are the creator of all things. They're worshiping him and they're giving him the highest praise and letting him know you are creator of all things and that you created all things for your pleasure. You all, as I reviewed this chapter, it it, it really took me some time to record this session because I mean, the Lord really dealt with me on this specific chapter because one, I really thought deeply about John in his relationship with the Lord. I thought deeply about Ezekiel also in his relationship with the Lord. I also thought deeply about Isaiah. These men of God, their relationships with the Lord was such that they were blessed and endowed by God to experience heavenly encounters. And it really caused me to do a self-examination. It really caused me to just pause and think about my life and, and the things that I am doing for the Lord and just just made me wonder and made me think on the things that I'm doing for the Lord, the people that I even um, watch in worship, the, the people that I support in worship. I, I think about this encounter John had he had to be living a life that was uh, in, in just great regard toward the Lord for him to experience this type of encounter. To see God. To see the, the actual worship in heaven and what it would be like. Then secondly, this chapter made me really and truly focus on uh, the things that I do and the dying to the flesh. It really had me focus on that. If you are listening to this session, I want to encourage you to listen to this session more than once. Open up your Bibles. Read along. If you read along as we go through these sessions, you you can't help but be blessed. Not only does the Lord reveal that John is experiencing a heavenly encounter. Not only does the Lord reveal this, but God is God has allowed John to write down for us to see and imagine, to visualize and imagine what he saw in heaven. And when hearing about this encounter, I don't know about you, but for me, I can't help but say, am I ready? Am I truly ready? This entire focus on the book of Revelation is that we may be rapture ready, that we may be ready when the Lord call us home. And and really and truly, it makes you wonder, are you really ready? There is so much flesh to still die. When I think about my life, I'm praying daily, Lord, that I may die to this flesh. Because oftentimes I see that there is a tug of war between spirit and the flesh. And you all to enter into the presence of God, to enter into the heavenly realms, we must die to the flesh. 
We cannot afford to be lackadaisical. We cannot afford to be mundane in our worship. We cannot afford to be slothful or lazy in our worship, in our studying, in our preparation of preparing our hearts for being in God's presence. We must take great delight. In being in God's presence. And that's what this scripture is all about. That's what this text is all about. John, he had such a relationship with God that he was able, he was afforded the opportunity to experience worship. In heaven. You guys, I want to ask that question. Are you ready for worship in heaven? Are you ready for continual praise to God? Be careful when you answer that question. Because to say I'm ready... It says that you're willing to die to the flesh. It says that even when you don't feel like it, even when you aren't feeling well, even when all chaos is going on in your life, even when your your personal affairs are not 100% together, you will still make a choice to diligently serve and worship God. And there are times where we have a bad week, we have a bad day, we have a bad moment, and we don't want to pray. We have a bad day, we have a bad week, we have a bad moment, and we don't want to worship. But you all, John is letting us see and know that everything in heaven worship him. And this worship is not. When fe- when you feel like it, this worship is continual. Let me jump into my study application Bible. I'd like to share some of the explanations listed in for these specific scriptures. And I'll read uh, for verses 6 through 7, the explanations written in my study application application Bible are as follows. Just as seven lighted lamps symbolize the Holy Spirit, the four living creatures represent the attributes, qualities, and character of God. These creatures were not real animals like the cherubim, and and I mentioned that before, the angelic being we spoke of before, a high-ranking order of angels. The the, the cherubim is a high-ranking order of angels, and this specific angel has the, the, the four animal characters in which that were described in John's description as well as Ezekiel description. However, what what we're being um, what's being explained here is is that this is not the reference for chapter four. The reference of the four beasts that John uh, was describing were referencing the character and qualities of God. So it goes on to say they guard God's throne, lead others in worship, and proclaim God's holiness. These creatures were not real animals. Like the cherubims, a high-ranking order of angels, they guard God's throne lead others in worship and proclaim God's holiness, God's attributes symbolized in the animal like appearance of these four creatures are majesty and power, the lion, faithfulness, the ox, intelligence, the human, and sovereignty, the eagle. The Old Testament prophet 
Ezekiel saw four similar creatures in one of his visions. Crystal clear, crystal clear glass, that's a tongue twister, was virtually impossible to find in New Testament times. See 1 Corinthians 13 and 12. The sea of glass highlights both the magnificent the magnificence and holiness of God. Now, looking at verse 9, uh, the explanation is as such. John describes these scenes in great detail because Christians in the first century became came from many backgrounds. Not all of them understood Jewish history or knew the glory of the temple. The book of Revelation instructs us in worship. It shows us where, why, and how to praise God. Worship takes our mind off our problems and focuses them on God. Worship leads us from individual meditation to being part of a community praising and honoring God. Focusing on his love and his character, worship causes us to consider and appreciate God's character. Worship lifts our perspective from the earthly to the heavenly. You all, just as I said before, this just saying that we're ready for heaven is saying that we are also willing to die to this flesh, willing to forget about all of our personal affairs, willing to forget about financial problems, marital problems, uh, uh, relational problems, emotional problems, uh, mental problems, all of these things, health problems, all of these things are no longer relevant because we are engulfed in worship and praise to God. So that is something just to think about. Now, the explanation for verse 11 says, This hymn of praise sums up the entire scene. All creatures in heaven and earth will praise and honor God because he is the creator and sustainer of everything. No other king or ruler could make such a claim. You all, this this scripture text tonight, really and truly provokes us to take a look at our lives and examine our lives, examine how our willingness to praise and worship God, examine our readiness for the kingdom of God. Listen, my brothers, my sisters, when you come into relationship with our heavenly father you gain a new citizenship okay if you are here in the united states your citizenship is a u.s citizen if you are in other countries you know what these countries are your citizenship is to that country however i would like to share with you tonight if you are a child of god if you are in relationship with the lord jesus christ you can be in the U.S., you can be in the U.K., you can be in Russia, you can be in, in wherever, whatever country you are in, you are still also a citizen in the kingdom of God. And if you are a citizen in the kingdom of God, it is imperative that you strive dailyness daily for readiness toward a going to the kingdom of God listen when I was in the military there were several things we had to do as far as preparing for readiness wartime readiness there were tr- there were trainings that we had to take there were constant constant battlefield trainings that we had to encounter to be battlefield ready 
Likewise, if you are a child of God, if you have gained or received kingdom citizenship, my sister, my brother, I would like to let you know it is imperative that you work diligently on your readiness for kingdom status, for for transitioning to kingdom. And what kingdom am I talking about? The heavenlies, the kingdom of God. Your transition into the kingdom of God. Are you ready? That is the question to ask. This is not our forever home. We are on assignment for the Lord here. And at some point, Each and every one of us will experience the kingdom. And I do mean each and every one of us. The word of God tells us that every knee shall bow, every tongue will confess that Jesus is Lord. We will all encounter the kingdom of God. The question is, Will that be your permanent home? Will that be your eternal home? If you are uncertain of your eternal home, if you are uncertain of where you will spend eternity, I would encourage you, take out time Talk to the Lord. Repent of those things you know that you've done wrong. Those things you don't even know that you've done wrong. Repent. Welcome the Lord. Accept the Lord as your personal Savior and King. If you can do this, if you can accept the redemption plan that God designed that you may have eternal life. What is that redemption plan, Sister Annie? That redemption plan is God gave his son, his only son for you and for me, for us all. His son suffered the penalty for our sins. That we may no longer be separated from the presence of God. It is because of the sin of the first Adam and Eve that caused us to be in eternal separation from God. However, when we accept Jesus in our lives, when we accept that Jesus died, and rose on the third day, defeated hell and sin for our sake. Then we come into relationship with him. When we confess this with our mouth, when we believe it in our heart, it's not enough to just confess it. The Bible tells us it is impossible to please God without faith. It requires faith to believe this. When you believe this in your heart, then, then you can accept citizenship into the kingdom of God. And it's so simple. The penalty was paid by way of Jesus Christ. That you and I may never be separated. That you and I may experience an eternal life of joy, love, happiness. No more tears. No more pain. No more health issues. No more emotional issues. No more anxiety. You all. This heavenly encounter says everything. John's heavenly encounter testifies to
to the continual worship in heaven to our heavenly father. My question to you, my brother, my sister, in Christ, are you ready? What does your worship life look like? What does your prayer life look like? Is it consistent? Or is it something you need to work on? Now is the time you all. Every day we awake, we have an opportunity to continue working on our consistency in prayer, in communion with our Heavenly Father, in worship. Well, you all, that's all I have for you tonight. I hope that you have enjoyed this session. I have truly been blessed by this session, you guys. This is the time now where I openly invite you to subscribe to my channel, like this video, subscribe to my channel, share this video with your friends, do listen to it again, go through each one of these verses again, meditate on this word. This word is worth your time to meditate. You all, we need to examine ourselves. We need to examine our lives and we need to know how to answer that question. Are we kingdom ready? So as I stated before, I pray that you have heard something that has truly penetrated your heart tonight. Listen, on the template, there are some questions from last week's session. I'd like you to answer those questions in the comment. And thank you so much for watching. watching. Until the very next time you hear my voice or see my face, I pray that the Lord will continue to bless you real good. Take care.